What's going on guys, welcome to a new video and today I want to show you how to scale your Facebook ads to over $1,000 per day. So here we are then in one of my ad manager accounts um, and I just want to show you guys something just as a bit of proof really and I want to show you what happened yesterday which I found quite interesting. So here's the two campaigns in question then. You can see that yesterday was the first time I broke the £1,000 mark per day with this campaign performing at £900, this one at £175, making a combined total then of that little bit over the £1,000 mark. Now, what I want to show you guys actually, which I found quite interesting and a reason for why you should always do the breakdown by day like this is because it allows you to spot patterns. And what I want to show you then in this campaign here, you can see that the ad spend for that day was only about 5% increased from the previous day. But if you look at the amount of impressions and the reach, they actually increased by 25%. And the reason being for this then is the CPM. As you can see, the more money I spent, then my CPM actually decreased. And I believe the reason for this then being is the fact that because I was showing willingness to spend more money and my ads were performing well, then Facebook was giving me more favorable results. I was coming to that sweet spot essentially within the audience where I was starting to add outbid other people and because my ads were getting good engagement then Facebook was showing my ads to more people essentially. What you've got to remember then is that Facebook is a social media platform and it's also a bidding platform as well so it's going to give the favorable results to the people who can combine those two things into one ad so the people spending the most money and the people getting the highest rate of engagement as well. So what I'm gonna show you in this video then is the strategy I use to achieve these kind of results. And I've broken it down then step by step, easy to follow, um, to hopefully make it as clear as possible so you guys can go out there and scale your campaigns as well. Now, before we get into this, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one call with me on this video. If you want to enter the draw then, all you have to do is like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video then, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced and that being said then let's get straight into it now before you actually start scaling your ads then there's a few requirements that you must have first number one you have to make sure you have enough cash um, purely to scale to an ad spend of $500 per day if you don't have the money to spend on ads then you're not going to be able to scale to that kind of ad spend and secondly you also need enough cash to fulfill orders as well with drop shipping it's no secret that delivery can take up to three weeks sometimes so in my personal opinion you want to fulfill your orders as soon as possible so you need enough cash to be able to fulfill those daily orders until you start seeing the payouts from Shopify so it's worth doing some quick maths then before you start to implement this strategy for example if we're going to $1,000 per day and we need to work out what our percentage cost of goods sold so if you're selling say for example a $10 product and it costs you $2 then that's a 20% cost of goods therefore if you're achieving $1,000 per day every day it's going to cost you $200 to fulfill your orders. So make sure it's the cost of the actual product and the shipping included as well. You also need your pixel installed then on your Shopify store because we're going to be creating a lot of custom audiences, doing a lot of retargeting, a lot of lookalike audiences as well. Um, just as kind of like a basic requirement, I recommend everyone have your pixel installed. You also need a product that's already performing as well. If you're not making money spending say 50 or $100 per day, then you're certainly not gonna make money spending $500 per day. You also need an original ad copy then. The ads that work best on Facebook are original ads, ones that people haven't seen before. If you're using the same image or the same video as everyone else, then you can only expect to achieve the same results as everyone else. If you wanna excel, then you have to do it differently and you have to do it in an original way that's gonna spark interest with your audience. So there's been many studies around before and video ads work 100% the best. They outperform images by an absolute mile. Um, and if you can then have two plus creatives if possible. So what I do now is I have my product shipped to somebody on Fiverr and they'll create a unique ad with people in. There's a team of people that record themselves using the product. And just an example of this then, um, Blue Crate do it very well. So just head over to their Facebook page. You can look at their info and ads and you can see that all of their ads a lot of them have the same people in, so it's the same team of people recording themselves using the product and it's just the best way to do it. Another thing they do as well is they have, as you can see, the writing over the ads so that anybody scrolling through who doesn't want the sound on can still see essentially what the product is, what it's doing and the message that the advertiser is trying to get across. 
So two plus creatives if possible. We're gonna get more into that later in the video and why you need as many creatives as possible. Um, and then lastly, you need a store conversion rate, ideally of 3% plus. This comes back to Facebook. Now, I'm not sure whether it's been proven or not, but in my personal opinion, Facebook will want to show your ads to a store that is converting the highest because therefore they can class that traffic as a higher quality traffic and then they can charge more for it if that makes sense. So the higher converting your store is, then the more people Facebook are likely to drive to your store or actually show your ad to. So when it comes to Facebook ads then, essentially this is, these are the different types of traffic you have. There's a whole scale, I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but you can have cold traffic, warm traffic, and hot traffic. And the hotter your traffic is, so as it says there, the further to the left, the better your audience will convert. So essentially as people become warmer, and recognize your brand more, then the more likely they are to convert. And this is the principle then that the strategy is based on. And it's also this principle that I base all of my scaling, all of my testing strategies on, um, on this one principle. So cold traffic then, this is typically new impressions, people who haven't seen your product or your brand before, and these will be the least converting traffic as well, the least converting side at least. So typically then this is where people start, maybe the position you're in, and this is what we're gonna be building on, and this is essentially how we're going to scale then to, to those pretty decent numbers of over $1,000 per day. So interest tags and then flex tagging works best to begin with. I'm gonna explain this image in a second, which illustrates my point quite nicely. Um, but a couple of other things then that you should be doing. Um, number one, you should be creating posts on your Facebook page. You need to grab the post ID. I've done a video on this um, and use that same post ID. You can actually select it from within the ad creation side as well in your ad manager account, um, just to use that same post. And therefore anybody who sees it, anybody who engages with it, it's gonna be building up the likes, the comments, the shares. And the more of those you have, then the more comfortable somebody is gonna be with that ad and the more likely they are to trust it and therefore buy from it or actually tag someone else or share someone else. Remember, it comes back to the point, Facebook is a social media platform. The more people engage with your ad, then the more favorable results you're going to get. And then the last point then is an optional point, but definitely favorable is run at least two ad creators per ad set. So when you're creating an ad set, when you're creating your ad within, then try and have two different ad creators because the more creatives you can test, then the better chance you have of achieving the optimal results. You can achieve really good results, but unless you test other ad creatives as well, then you don't know if, it, if you're performing at its peak. So you might be able to achieve a five pound cost for purchase, which is really good. But then if you test five other ad creatives, then all of them might perform at three dollars per cost per purchase or four dollars and therefore they'll be outperforming it even though you think you're getting good results you still might be able to get even better so this is essentially how flex targeting works and anybody starting out even from the beginner for the beginner with a fresh new pixel then i 100 percent recommend using this method so to achieve optimal results then on facebook your pixel has to be matured um, it's called pixel maturity and essentially what that means then is the more data that's gone through an ad set the more efficient it will be at picking out the people who are gonna be interested in your product. So when you first begin then, because there's not gonna be a lot of data going through, essentially it's not gonna be very good at doing its job. So this is where flex tagging comes in. So when it comes to picking interests, then you want to pick interests that are relatable to enthusiasts within your niche. So for example, I could say Tiger Woods, as you can see, it's this light green circle on the outside. I could say Tiger Woods to you and you probably know who he is. You might not have even picked up a single golf club in your life, but because he's quite famous, then you probably know who he is. Therefore, if I was to target Tiger Woods, then you might be included in that audience and then, and it would be a completely waste of money if you've never picked up a golf club. Then I could flex that with Phil Mickelson. Now, if you're not big on golf, you might not know who he is. Therefore, you're narrowing your audience down to people who have who are more of a golfing enthusiast and therefore more likely to be interested in my product. And then I could go even one step further and target someone like Bubba Watson. Now, if you've never played golf before or never watched it, then the chances are you won't have a clue who he is. Whereas if you are an enthusiast and you watch the four majors every year and you play golf yourself, then you will definitely know who he is. Therefore, by targeting someone like him, you're more likely to find those people who are keen enthusiasts, actually play golf themselves and will be interested in your product. And just to illustrate this then, within my ad manager account here, as you can see, I've got Tiger Woods as an interest targeted and it's the potential reach of 8 million people. Now that is a huge amount of people. There's no 
way that everybody within that audience plays golf and therefore will be interested in my product. But if I just narrow the audience then by one step and we put Phil Mickelson in here, Phil Mickelson, then as you can see, it's reduced my potential reach to 350,000 people. So now somebody has to like Tiger Woods and they have to like Phil Mickelson. So therefore, you're, you're basically just laser focusing down on people who are more likely to be interested. Then you can narrow it even further and we can put Bubba Watson in here. Bubba Watson. And if you look at the potential reach now, it's gone even one step further. So that would be a great example then of flex tags in and actually laser focusing down on your audience. Now you might be thinking 85,000 people is quite small and yes it is. It's a nice number to start with, but you're soon going to burn through that audience in which case you'll start to, you'll need to increase that audience so you can start reaching new people. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. It's not the topic of the video, but I know I'm going to get questions on it. So just to illustrate an example, you could get rid of Phil Mickelson for from here and just go Tiger to Bubba, or you can actually include Phil Mickelson up here. And as you can see, the potential reach is now 260,000. So you've gone from 85 to 265,000. So you can still use the same interests, but in depending on how you narrow it, how you include them, then you can soon increase that audience. So back to the notes then, let's stay on track as much as possible. Um, we're now moving into warm traffic then. So these are people who have seen your ad before, they're aware of your brand, but for whatever reason, they didn't click on your ad. It could be because they were busy, they didn't have time, or they might just not been of in might not have been interested. But anyway, we still want to base audiences on these because they've shown more interest. Essentially, it's warmer traffic than people who have never seen us before. Therefore, this audience will convert more than others. So to start with then, we want lookalike audiences on the video views. As long as you've stuck to stuck to what I've recommended up here of using video ads, then you're gonna have this option of targeting wise where you can actually choose all of these people and we want to experiment with all of these audiences just to see essentially which ones work the best. But just in case you are tight on budget, then just start at the highest percentage and work your way down. So start at 95% because in theory, people who have watched your video ad for the longest have the biggest interest in your product. And just to illustrate then how you would do this, I've got my asset library open here. Here. So you can just go in the three dots, go to audiences, it will take you to this screen. We want to click on create audience, custom audience. Then we want to click on this video here. We've got engagement. We can choose all the ones here we just saw in the screenshot. You could go people who watch 95% of your video. Um, and then what I recommend is going the past 60 days because anything after or a bit longer than that, then people might not really remember your video ad or remember who you are and therefore it'd be like advertising to cold traffic again so as a very maximum then i recommend 60 days so back to the notes then there's also one more lla we can target and this is engagement so as you can see in the screenshot these are all the different ones you can target and again just to illustrate it in case you're not quite sure how to get to that screen we we'll go to custom audience then we want to go to facebook page you can choose the page in which you want to choose the engagements for. And then if you could just click this drop down here, you can see people who engage with your page, anyone who visited with a post or ad. Um, and these are essentially the ones that we want to test with as well. Now, just in case you're wondering about budgets and things like that, this will be covered later on in the video. So don't worry, make sure you stay tuned for that. So moving on into the hot traffic. So these are people who are aware of your brand and have visited your store. So nobody's gonna go to your store then unless they have an interest. Therefore, they're hot traffic and therefore they're going to be the highest converting. So number one place to start then is retargeting ads. So you can retarget your custom audiences as soon as you have enough data. And the audiences that you want to retarget then are people who have purchased who have purchased your original product, but you want to advertise a new product to them. As long, if they've bought products from you and you've provided a good service, it's a good product, then there's no reason why they won't buy another product with you. And then you also want to target everyone else. So this is pretty much anyone who hasn't made a purchase. We want to advertise them the same product, but this time we want to offer an incentive to actually come back and finish the purchase and actually buy something. So we offer an incentive, it could be something like a discount code and we want to use a new creative as well so it can be a carousel ad or image which is absolutely fine but we also want to put in the text copy and acknowledge them and thank them for showing an interest so it could be thank you for visiting our site 
um, as a thank you, here's 20% off your next order with code 20 off or whatever it could be. Just make sure you tailor the ad to the audience and thank them and show interest and just general appreciation and people are really gonna appreciate that themselves. Now, when it comes to retargeting ads, you might be worried about spamming people, showing them your ad again and again and again. But there's an ecom rule of seven then, which is essentially means somebody has to see your brand or your product seven times on average before they actually make a purchase. So just keep an eye on that frequency score. Start at $5 per day, because if you haven't got many people on your audience, then obviously start with $100 per day. You're probably gonna get a frequency score of like a thousand in one single day. So start with $5 per day and just keep an eye on your frequency score. Moving on then to the LLAs in the hot traffic. Essentially, this is the website traffic. So people who have been in your store, again, I've got a screenshot just to illustrate it. You can target anybody who's been to your site. You can also target people who have been to specific web, web pages. But what you can do, which I find works really well as well, um, is visitors by time spent. So people who have spent the longest time on your store are typically the ones that are gonna convert the highest because if they spent the highest time in your store, the chances are they've been clicking around your store, checking things out, looking at other products. But then the uh, on the flip side of that, the longer somebody spends on your store, the more opportunity there is for them to be distracted. So there could be a number of reasons why they didn't actually finish and make a, pro make a purchase. It could be that they got a phone call, they got a message, they were driving, their lunch break ended, whatever it is. So we wanna take advantage of this and actually retarget these people. And again, we wanna acknowledge them and make the ad creative, unique and specific to those people. We can also target the different events as well then, so we can target a page view, a view content, add to cart, etc. So moving on to budgets and tweaks then, probably the bit you've been waiting for. In terms of ad set budget then, I recommend starting at at least $10 per day. The reason being for this then, a couple of reasons really. Number one, um, going back to that original point, Facebook is a bidding platform. The more budget we tell Facebook we want to use, then the better chance we have of outbidding people. And plus on YouTube and other social media platforms, and there is a $5 per day trend. So if we tell Facebook we're willing to spend double the amount of all those people using $5, then again, we're gonna outbid them. And as long as we've got a decent ad with good engagement, then we're always gonna beat them too. We're always gonna get more favorable results. So we wanna run the ad sets then for a minimum of three days. Now this depends on how much data you wanna collect. Obviously the more data you have, then the more accurate decisions you can make, the more informed decisions you can make. For example, if you compare the data from 1,000 views versus 10,000 views, then the 10,000 views is gonna give you a better idea of whether people actually have an interest or not because it's 10 times the amount of people. You're just gonna get better averages. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, any questions at all, then please do leave a comment down below. I always get back to it every single single person. So once you've run them for three days, then we wanna kill all non-profitable ones and increase the budget of the profitable ones by 20%. Now, the reason you wanna do 20% is because you don't wanna to go too big too quickly, not until we actually get into this section in a second, which I'm gonna talk about. We just wanna build things up slowly. Now, you might think that sounds quite slow, but if you start on $30 per day, scaling by 20%, in less than a week, you'll be spending over $100 per day. So things do, when you compound interest things by 20%, it will soon build up. So you wanna be patient, um, and you don't wanna essentially go too quickly. Don't be in a rush too much. Moving on then, we're gonna scale the budgets of these ad sets that are profitable up to $100 plus per day before we start duplicating them. Now the reason being for this then is because we wanna make sure that we have a winning ad set and we're getting consistent results. Unless you get consistent results, you won't know that. You've probably seen it before where you've been spending say $20 per day, even $50 per day. And one day you could get 20 sales, the next day you could get five sales, the next day you could get 10 sales, the next day you could get five sales again. You just won't see consistent results. And usually find at about $100 per day, then things start to optimize, things start to stabilize, and essentially you start to see a consistent amount of sales coming in. So when you do duplicate, then only duplicate if you're going to a larger budget, because you wanna keep up that amount of data that's going through the ad set so you can optimize it very quickly. And if you do duplicate, then make sure you pause the original ad set. Otherwise, you're just gonna have two ad sets competing against each other, um, which effectively will drive up the costs of both of them, or one might just completely outperform the other and the cost of the other will just completely skyrocket. 
So duplication works best with a new ad creative and when frequency score is five plus as well. So typically I'll never duplicate an ad set unless my frequency score starts to get quite high. And if it does, I'll duplicate to a new ad creative as well. And the reason being for this then is because if you just keep some showing somebody the same ad, the second they'll see it, they'll recognize it. They'll, and if they've kind of like assigned a negative, a negative feeling to that, they or like they're not interested in it the second they see it they might think nope not interested whereas if you've got a new ad creative then they're more likely to actually watch that video again um, and essentially see what the product is because it's a new ad creative they've never seen it before they're going to be more intrigued to watch something new than something they've seen over five times before so moving down then budget changes then i recommend making them these between 12 pm and 6 am um, and that's gonna be in your local time of the country you're showing your ads in as well, because I find this is where, typically where the least amount of sales will come through. So if you make a change during these hours, it won't dramatically affect your results, where if you change it in the middle of the day, then Facebook will rush to spend that daily budget in the remaining hours of the day, and therefore it could skew your results. So a couple of things then, just to round the video off, if your sales start to drop off, then what you wanna do is start creating new creatives, because to me, that's a sign that you've started to exhaust an audience they've seen your ad before therefore they're no longer engaging with it they're no longer watching it and this will drive up your cpm because facebook will see it as people not interested and therefore you won't see as good a results whereas if you have new creative it's a new video that people are going to watch it's a new video people are going to engage with and therefore you'll be able to keep going and still get those that good rate of engagement and therefore those cheaper and lower cpms remember facebook is a social media platform and engagement is king with your audience and as i just mentioned then um, it will lead to an increased reach a lower cpm which is always a good thing um, and i think i've mentioned this as well to so an exhausted audience so keep testing new interests to reach a fresh audience and just essentially just bring fresh people into your pixel and into your custom audiences and then finally then when you reach these 1k days and you want to build on that here's a couple of points just to consider i'm using manual bidding if you obviously if you want a video just on this topic make sure you let me know down below in the comment section so what i do then is i pause and duplicate the profit ad sets that are currently used in the auto bid and I duplicate them then to a manual bid and increase the daily budget quite significantly. So usually two exit, three exit, sometimes even five exit. And I usually set like a target cost of about two slash three times what my current cost per purchase is because what this is going to do then is it's just basically going to tell Facebook I've got all this money to spend every single day I've got a high cost per purchase to achieve and if you're already getting the good results and you know it's a tried and tested product so I only recommend doing this once you have those tried and tested products and ad sets then it basically tells Facebook I'm willing to spend a lot of money I'm willing to spend a lot per um, per purchase per action um, so essentially it's going to give you the favorable results as long as you've got a good ad of course that people are engaging with and as it says there to finally finish off the video um, you only do this when you have a successful ad because you need to know a realistic target cost per purchase and that basically guys that wraps up the video if you're still watching um, hopefully you've learned something new hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did then all i ask is that you leave a like and if you want to be entered into the raffle then of course make sure you leave a comment down below as well um, and that being said then let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video here we are then guys on my previous video if you haven't watched it yet make sure you go back and check it out um, probably one of the best videos I've ever put out. It's at 1400 views, over 100 likes, which is just absolutely crazy. So thank you very much to everybody who has seen it and is supporting the channel. Um, so I'm just gonna take the URL then at the top, as you can see, head over to the random comment picker. So all these competitions are 100% random. I don't pick the winners myself, unfortunately. Um, and all you've got to do to enter then is leave a comment down below. So the one this time then is Charlie Ainsworth. Amazing info and advice. This helps a lot. Thanks, Jack. So cheers, Charlie. Thanks very much. Um, make sure you reach out on Instagram and we can get that call arranged. And for everybody then who doesn't want to keep commenting on every video and just wants to get down to business and book a call straight away, then there is a link down below in the video description. And that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap the video up. Thanks for watching um, and I'll see you in the next one.